You want it on the screen before you start recording. Right now. Go. Three wood. It is the first sniff of spring. The old swamp fox is on the move. Come with me, said he, and journey through the land of the trembling earth. So together we glanced and darted across its tannic black carpet, chasing the sun's reflections as if young again, pausing occasionally to admire Mother Nature's new brood of golden club. George Allen Sermons has spent much of his life in George's Okefenokee swamp, knows instinctively its moods and habits and creatures. Looks like eight or nine foot alligator right in there. Ah, yes, the elusive alligator. Fact is, George poached a few gators in his day, went to prison for three months in 1986 for illegally trying to sell alligator meat to an FBI agent. Ironically, the episode spawned a new beginning for this 60-year-old recovering alcoholic. It's amazing, though, know, how God works in man's life. Here I was, a, a great white hunter. I mean, a mean bat, you know. God changed me like that. Made something else out of it. With the guidance of what he calls greater power, George got the idea in prison to build a center for other recovering alcohol and drug addicts. And he did, with only a pauper's budget. He also turned what he calls the Bridges of Hope into a mostly self-sustaining farm operation, where currently 60 men from around the nation live and work in a communal atmosphere that is part boot camp, part spiritual center. Those expecting to be coddled need not apply. We'll help you with your problem if we can. If we can't, we'll put your butts down the road. Is that simple? Some of you out here have been in prison. Some of you out here come from dysfunctional families. Some of you out here come from good families. But you didn't get here by missing Sunday school class. In an era of skyrocketing costs for treatment of any kind, Bridges of Hope is something of an enigma. It costs nothing to enter the program. There is no paid staff. Not even the founder is salaried. The center is run for and by the men on a meager eighty to $90,000 annual budget. In other words, $110 per man per month. Private donations keep the center afloat. That and a $12,000 yearly federal grant, George Sermons has wrangled as chairman of the Clinch County Commission, his other job. People thought enough of George while he was in prison to hold his job open for him. Now they're proud of this man who's been sober for 18 years and the work he's doing at the Bridges of Hope. State facility like this, say with a 28-day program, would probably run ten to $12,000 for resident. You, you have to kind of do this thing on faith. If, if you have faith in yourself and in your program, that's the key to this thing. People helping people. Help then, then I could find about a great thought came. It clouded all else. Through a repeated series of study lessons, Bible reading, and shared experiences, the men are in daily pursuit of spiritual enlightenment. Getting sober or giving up snorting cocaine or both is the easy part, they say. Taking that second step is real important. Believing that a power greater than ourselves can restore us to sanity. I kind of had trouble with that number two step because I didn't think I could get restored. You know, but I was so far gone. Yeah, it was a paper man. I come man. here, you know, you know, met up with. A lot of guys at the same problem. 50% of each man's day is devoted to exploring the psychological reasons for his addiction. Candidly stripped of pretense, they try and confront their demons. I felt like my family had wronged me. The law had wronged me. You know, everybody did it to Scott. Uh, I know now that Scott did it to Scott. The only thing I could 
do is kind of replace the old habits that I have with new new habits. And that, that's gonna take practice. We come here and we do what we're told. We shut up, we listen, we learn, and we grow. Also, if I don't get it here, I don't think I get it. I don't think I got enough chance. I got an ego problem. Real bad. <laughs> I have to work on it here. A lot of tough love has helped me take a good look at myself. Since 1986, some 3,000 men have come through the center with an average stay of six to eight months. Along the way, a cornerstone of the program, challenging addiction, has been what George calls tough love. The tough love part is making them take a look at themselves. Grow up. And it's confrontation. You just can't do it your way, the immature way that you just got you in the position today you're in. That that uh, that not giving a damn and go, doing as you want to. Do. You stop when you come through the gates of British Hope. You stop doing it your way. <laughs> and oh, how the cultures cross currents down on the farm. Some to Under the watchful eye of straw boss Don Burton. Ex-addicts from the mean streets of Harlem and Miami are learning to milk cows, of all things, and loving it. These hands never been good, but I always figured for nothing, but now they are good for something. The boys in the hood would be proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, how many of them cows in Harlem? I, I, I think I might be the first. <laughs> Men bring all sorts of emotional baggage to the bridges. Some last only a few days. Kansas farmer Don Bergman, on the other hand, has been around for 18 months and dreads the thought of leaving. Well, I don't want to go. I, I'll stay here and pay back the bridges for what they did. If I can use what the people in the program taught me, share it with these new ones, and help them, it makes me happy. It makes my day. Billy Teal, who's been institutionalized a number of times because of a drinking problem, likes the idea of a safe place supervised by addicts, managed by alcoholics. They've been there, they felt the pain that you're feeling. It gives you a little hope. First, you can't see much light at the end of the tunnel, but it gets brighter the longer you, you stay here. <laughs> There is a footnote about the success rate here, should be mentioned. Right now, only one in four of these men is likely to return home mentally and physically capable of staying away from drugs and alcohol. But they are trying. And victories, however measured, can only give hope for those who are surely to follow.